Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, and welcome back to Twin Cities by Night and our third story arc, Dread. Dread is set in the Twin Cities of Minnesota, Minneapolis, and St. Paul in the hot and humid summer of 2011. Join us again and continue to follow the journey of Katow, played by Quinn, and William, played by Slavic, as they continue to traverse the dark society held within the Twin Cities. They will be joined by three new kindred, Warren, a Tremere, played by Adam, Valentine, a Nosferatu, played by Alex, and Lenny, a Nosferatu, played by Andrew. The quarter will find themselves joined together by a sense of dread. If you'd like to contact us, you can follow us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM or Facebook at Twin Cities by Night. We hope you enjoy. You five are standing in an uncomfortable silence right now in this living room, you know, after William was like asking about if a deal could be made. Mm-hmm. And there's a moment where Chris is looking at you, William, and you're looking at Chris because you can kind of get the impression you from your interactions before too that Chris is the guy who usually is kind of like taking on, lack of a better term, the alpha role of the of this relationship between these two. And you see a moment where you can, can, can kind of tell through Chris's fear, he's trying to formulate a response to you. But then abruptly from Bobby, you hear him go, you guys can't fuck with us, man. We're protected. You can't fuck with us. And you see a moment where Chris like looks at Bobby and you see like a, like a shut the fuck up look from his face. And he looks... I sort of raise a quizzical eyebrow at him, you know, just like. See, Chris looked at Bobby and then he looks at you and he's like, what my brother is trying to say is that we are aware of your fraternity and we ourselves have been vouched by a member of our fraternity within the city. That's all well and good, but I didn't mention anything regarding any threats such merely wanted to conduct business is there any anywhere we could sit see a moment where he's like go ahead sit down and he kind of motions to the couch and he looks at the other dude he's like get up he's like motion for that guy who sat at the edge of the couch to get up and you see the guy get up and he kind of like is going way along the wall and then you see like bobby grabs like these like two camping chair chairs because this is sparsely furnished this isn't like you know what i mean like a house that's all right. like yeah. decked out and you see like Bobby and Chris sit in these like camping chairs and they kind of motion for you to sit on you two to sit on the couch there. So, yeah, William, you know, sits down, sort of looks at Katow if he's going to sit or just, you know, stand. I'll just stand. And you see Bobby's leg like bouncing, you know what I mean? Like a nervous tick, you know what I mean? It's just like bouncing over and over. Listen, I've met you before. You did. Yes. When you're with Jonathan. And, and he looks at Bobby. We know of you and Jonathan and you. And he looks at you, Katow, and the fraternity you're part of. And we have no issue with it. But we are employees of someone who's part of that same fraternity. And you see, like, the way he's talking, his eyes are like, it's like you hear this, like, kind of like this um instinctual pleading in his voice, but he's not pleading. But you know what I mean? It's almost like trying to calm you down, trying to, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Show your dominance to him. He's trying to do that, you know, in his tone and in his in his inflection of his voice. They don't need to be so nervous. Nothing, unless you have something to be nervous about. And you see him look, and he's like, We're, I'm not nervous. Our friend here looks a little tense, Katow. You think you could rough his back a bit? Sure. This guy would just go over and just be like, yeah, you know... The neck really just holds so much tension and, and, and stuff. And so, uh, you know, if you just get it just the right angle, you can make all the pain go away. Which brother are you doing that to? Bobby, the nervous <laughs> one, or are you doing that to Chris? So you walk and you put your hand on Chris and you say that. And you see Chris is just like, and you see Chris's eyes close. William, while he does that. And you see Bobby look up and he's like, you can't fuck with us, man. And you see Chris go, shut the fuck up, Bobby. Shut the fuck up. You see, like, Bobby's, like, looking at you, Katow. And you, for a moment, Katow, you, you see, like, a, a spark of anger in Bobby's eyes. You know what I mean? As as you're doing that. And you see, like, Bobby just stopped and he looks and he looks forward. And he's, like, looking at the ground. You see, like, his jaws clenching and his foot or and his legs are scoring, like, you know, a million miles per hour. Let's go, what do you want? What do you two want? 
Well, our colleague, which you knew, Mr. Chase, well, he disappeared recently. This was very strange. He didn't give us notice at all. And trust me, he lets you know when he does stuff. It's kind of hard to miss it. So we did some investigating. Your names showed up. And now we're here. This doesn't have to be painful, but it can be. I don't know what happened to Jonathan, man. We're trying to fi- we were trying to find him too, man. Did you now? Yes. Tell me more. We made money off him. We we're trying to find him. You, you do this quick. for all your customers? And you say that behind. You got to realize the intimidating. <laughs> like when you ask that question, you see like, and you see when 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 Katow asks that question, William, you see like Chris just like close his eyes, and. Chris is going to try getting up. Are you going to let him get up, Katal? Like, he's no. going to... No. And he either gets up, you see, like, Katal's hand just stops there, and he's like, just come out with what you want, man. What do you want from us? Well, what is it, Katal? What do we want? Well, I think we just want to know... To pick your brains a little bit. You know we answer to people, too, man, right? Yeah. And you can't, sh- and you can't share with us what you shared with them? If it comes back on me and him, man, we're gone. We'll disappear. Well, so we dis- still have a head start. And you yeah. hear like you hear like from behind, you like from the wall, you're like, what the fuck is this shit, dude? And you see like this guy who's like standing against the wall. He's like this bug eyed and he has like this cigarette that has like an ash that he hasn't even taken a drag and he's like looking at this whole situation, which when you look over and you hear him say that, William, you're kind of getting the impression this guy is not in the know whatsoever. You know what I mean? He's just like yeah. looking at the scene. And to him, in this whiskey tango white trash dude's mind, he's like never seen just words and like people talk and intimidate and scare someone as shitless as he sees like Christopher and Bobby, who are his employees, or excuse me, employer. And he's just like, what the fuck? His mind's just starting to get blown and he's looking at you. I would say like storyteller common sense like thing and I'm not that you know what I mean that like this conversation may be going in areas and this guy's just like not privy to such things, you know. I will look at the, the gesture towards the uh shivering guy in the corner and be like, you know, why don't you just why don't you just send him to go get some food for us? You know, he doesn't really need to be here. He's you know, we're talking business. You notice as soon as you say that to Chris, like the dude doesn't, isn't even waiting to hear from Chris. He's just like fucking walking out the door, like a cigarette still in his fucking cigarette still in his hand. The door is open. He's out. He can't even get his vehicle out because Chris is parked behind it, but he's just gone, you know? And you see the door closed. You see Bobby's like looking at this guy as he's walking out, like he's a light preserver. Like Bobby's drowning in the ocean and he's looking at a life preserver bouncing away in the tide and the waves. And then he like looks back at you and he's like, shit, like in his head. He's like, for some reason, that one guy leaving. Yeah. And you two simply being alone. And you look at Chris and he's like, okay, what what do you want, man? Just let us know what you know. Yeah. Just answer know. the question. Okay. What's the question? Where'd Chase know? go? Yeah. I, we don't know where he went, man. We're, we're, uh, we're trying to find shit. And you hear Bobby, you hear Bobby go shit. And he looks at Bobby. He's like, Fuck it, man. Chris, is like, fuck it. He's like, you see, they're looking at each other like there's unspoken communication. He looks back at you, William. He's like, we don't fucking know where he's at, but we're trying to find those two people that were with him the pregnant chick and that fucking Mexican dude. Why do you care what that, about them? We don't fucking care, but the people who fucking tell us what to do care. Of course they do. So, I heard a little something about some shooting going on and seems that you two know something about that from what i heard yeah it wasn't us man it was fucking those hood rats from up north it was littles people they're trying to find the same two people that we're trying to find little really yeah Just really little have to do with anything i don't fucking make the calls man all i know is fucking like eight years ago we were told to move here we came here and we we're told to try to encroach on Little's business here. That's what we've been fucking doing, man. Subtly, by the way, until we got involved with that fucking Jonathan guy. What do you know about Little? He's the real fucking deal. I mean, I've never met the guy. I don't fucking even know what he fucking looks like. I just know that he runs like those fucking hood rats up north in the Echo Projects, man. Part of that whole Echo Projects crew, fucking running shit from the fucking the 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 those towers up there, man. 
That's all I fucking know. And all I know is he and his people are looking for the same two people that we're trying to find on orders. Interesting. Now you see, was this really does this really have to be so drawn out? You're not in pain? We're not gonna hurt you? It's all so simple. Yeah, and we're all gonna leave happy and satisfied. You hear Bobby go, You just signed my fucking death warrant, man. You know that? You just fucking killed us right now. And you see Chris look at him like like and you just see him put a like a a, a reassuring hand on Bobby's knee. When you see him look and he's like, We're fucked, man. You just <laughs> fucked us right now. I, I'll look him in the eyes and I'll say, Run. And I use dominate. Difficulty is the willpower, right? Current willpower, we'll say willpower. Yeah. We'll just say five. <laughs> <laughs> I get zero successes. You see William like come into Chris and he's like, run. And you see Chris look at him. He's like, what? Just run. Can I try and roll intimidate to... Yeah. Give me a manipulation intimidation difficulty like five because this whole situation's fucked. Difficulty five, that's two successes. Or what are you going to like? Like, how are you like, are you going to be like, get your shit and go I'm, get out I'm of the city? Basically, just give him a little push and just be like, we're giving you a head. We're letting you get a head start on all, all your on all your uh, chasers. Now go. And you see, like, he looks at you and he grabs Bobby's eyes. He's like, and he's like, get the fuck up. And you see him like pushing Bobby to the door and he grabs like these keys from the key ring. You know, like there's a key ring holder by the door and he grabs them. And you just see the door open barefoot and everything you see him like get into the fucking escalade you hear start up and you see the lights come on you just feel it like squealing out of the driveway you two are standing there scenes on you guys that went remarkably easy yes perhaps the savants do have a point about showing our natures to some people (laughs) joke of course but you want to want to pick around here and see if there's anything we can find, or just want to leave? I suppose we could take their hard drives. All right, I'll head into like you know go through, searching through the rooms and just like you know t- pick pick apart any computers that we find. Yeah, you actually don't find any like computers or anything like that. But when you do go and you go into one room and you kind of, I'm just gonna kind of like describe the general like you guys searching the house and kind of like and you know what I mean and mm-hmm. and summaration i guess is the word what you guys pretty much find as you look through the house you realize this house is very sparse meaning that this house wasn't something where like they kept whatever they sold or they kept any traces was just simply like place to sleep you know what i mean and that these guys for no matter how young they seemed or maybe what behind the ears they kind of seemed that these guys knew how to keep a low profile man that's why they were admin to jonathan like we're gonna sell you guns don't do fucking shit with these guns. Be careful because we don't want to attract heat on ourselves. And so you're looking through the house. You're not really finding much. But when you get to their bedroom, you realize there's two bedrooms. And you see that there's nothing in one bedroom. And you see that, one, there's a king-size bed. And you see this this woman that's sitting in bed. She has, like, brown hair and brown eyes. She's Caucasian, but she's maybe, like, 105, 110 pounds. And when you come into the room, you open the door you kind of like smell like the musk you know what i mean like of unwashed sheets like 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 they were physical in this room but then you're kind of like through your both of your you know investigative skills i guess and intuition you kind of like get an impression that these two dudes shared the same room and these two room house and like this female may have been like the thing that these two men shared together you know these two brothers but that 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 there was like you don't see like they had two separate rooms there but you but the only thing you really find in this house is that there is this woman that is like sitting in bed. And she looks like a club goer. She looks like maybe she's like 22. She kind of has like, you know, that hairstyle that they had back in the early uh, or in like 2008, 2009, 10, where like they had the highlights and like it was kind of cut at different mm-hmm. layers. It kind of went like that. She has that. She's just kind of like looking at you too. And especially like, like Katow with you at first, she's kind of like, like what the fuck there's a guy who's coming in this room but then when william like steps in there you really see like like she just grabs those sheets tighter and she's like pulling them closer and she's just like looking at you guys and she's like oh where's chris and bobby where's chris and bobby they left and you can tell like that instinctual you know i'm not a female but like i can only imagine the instinctual feel that uh, the instinctual fear that a female would 
feel in a situation like this, you know, like two strangers that are coming in the room, the two guys that she came home with here are gone. And like, then a guy with the humanity three. So she's really starting to feel fear. And you can kind of tell it's like, it's really getting to her. Like when she's talking, like there's a stuttering in her voice that she's looking at you two that are in the doorway. Don't worry. We're just looking around for some things. Feel free to leave. And as soon as you say that, she's like, you see her like, like she's getting out of the bed. She turns her back to you guys and you can see like she's nude, but she's like quickly putting on this mini skirt and she's like throwing on like this tank top and she's just like not even grabbing her shoes, just grabbing like this purse that she had. She's like, when she says that, she like sees you guys at the door and she kind of like takes two steps forward to see if you guys will move, you know what I mean? Or if you guys are standing in the door and she's just, this is weird tension as she's looking at you too to see if you'll let her through. Katja will move to the side and just feel, you know, let the guy out of her way. And she's looking at you, William, as you're standing in the door, like waiting for you to move. Oh, yeah. William won't even pay any attention to her. Oh, he just kind of like, that, that's interesting. It's kind of like a, man, you're just an insect kind of thing. And he yeah. just walks off like there's no interest in there. She like quickly, you see her like she walks past you, Katow, and she's like looking at you. And then she like opens the door and she takes off. So like in the span of like fucking 15 minutes, you guys have literally like cleared out this house of all <laughs> people. And you guys are now standing in the middle of this house by yourselves i want to know what's going on in each of your minds real quick we'll go with william first what's going on in your mind right now william well well william was really just thinking about what the hell does little have to do with anything right now it's just you know he's, he's obviously little's people are looking for carlos and i don't remember what the chick's name was right now mm-hmm. They didn't seem to be in the uh, sort of uh, mindset to be lying, or if they did, they made it very convincing. So it's just, I guess, more questions than answers is what we got. Definitely. What about you, Katal? What's going on in your, your mind right now? Right now, his question is that, his, his, his concern is that if they put an X about whether or not they'll actually stay away, as in. He, he's not sure whether or not he believes them that you know, they're they're in such dire straits and that they might you know come back if, you know they might you know run off and squeal to the Giovanni or whatever about this. So he's he basically is like, okay, so well there is still you know, there he considers them still a factor in this until you know, we get you know, until like he makes it for certain that you know they're not in the city anymore. And for like when it comes to little, he's equally confused, but is a bit angry, just like so. That explains who he was shooting at, you know, Carlos and Cindy. But he is you now he has a, he has like a name to like to this just mysterious attackers, and so he's wondering like, what the hell? Like you know, does is everyone after after these thin bloods? You know, I'm after them. The Giovanni were after them. Now Little is after them. Like, you know, like, how do these people all decide? Oh, they suddenly want these people. When first of all, like, you know dealing with what you said about the Putinescos, one, you may have signed their death warrant if you were to believe what they said. Two, if you didn't, or even if you did, you have pretty much showed that you are involved in the game now. You know? Yeah. You two have pretty much planted your guide on and have been like, hello world, we're part of you now. You know, you're you're kind of like let it be known to the powers that be that we are involved in and there's no undoing that. Right? Yep. I mean, and even if these guys flee the city, which they may very well, I'm not saying if they will or will not, it's very most likely that now that some powers and, and the play of all this thing are now know that there's other chess pieces that are, are coming onto the table. And it's very true. Why are hypothetically, you know, three different factions in a fucking way or, 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 or three separate group of similar interests trying to find these two fucking random people? You know what I mean? that if not but a week ago the main concern with them was to try to get them become members of the camarilla you know so it's like very yeah it's very a lot of more questions than the answers and i apologize guys because i know that you guys probably wanted to come for answers but in a way you did come for you did get some answers they just haven't been fully interpreted yet so we are going to do a little time traveling to the night before so we can catch up valentine to the story valentine you just got done talking to Katow the night before and mm-hmm. Lenny at the park. And you had told 
Donald, your ghoul, your, your, your servant to mm -hmm. set up a meeting with your herd that had also relocated and transported themselves to the twin cities. We, we have talked about before in, and we'll cover this in the game about how you disguise yourself to your herd. You know, um, one way that we kind of like, we try to get creative and, and the way we handle our dots of the resources or whatever, for example, Williams herd are a bunch of work, uh, um, nursing home workers who he pretends to have like these like flings with like one night stands or whatever casual encounters with where yours is a little bit more of a more of a fetish in a way in the fact that you disguise yourself to be like a dwarf of an adult dwarf of of sorts and you have these two people that are kind of involved in the fetish scene that that are your herd that you feed from so what he did was you told donald to set it up and donald in a way you know like a thing about donald i kind of want to explore real quick your relationship with donald i'm not talking about in a scene or anything like that but just kind of expand on it you know mm -hmm. for being what donald was and for those of you who still haven't picked it up in this by chance donald was for lack of a better term a serial killer before he came within the sights of valentine and valentine gooled him and valentine looked at him almost as a way to like a project and the fact that he could reform this guy and make him pay for what he did, not in any kind of like vengeance or, you know, I'm an avatar of justice kind of thing, but more of a, uh, I would say almost like the beast side of Valentine, who at that time, Valentine could not rationalize it, still having the mind of a, of a, of a preteen, was able to connect with someone like Donald. And in a way, he made Donald start over in life, you know, like Donald disappeared, you know, from, from his life, but through you ghouling Donald and getting to know Donald for like the last 20 years, you know that Donald was a very analytical mind. The reason why Donald was never caught was because Donald was almost a way a hunter in the way that he did things and the way that he processed things and the way that he planned his murders. You know, you, I would, I could only imagine there was times where Valentine and Donald would talk, you know, and maybe even in a fucked up way, Valentine learned to handle the canine, the kinder condition before he met Ophelia by talking to some Donald and learning how Donald was able to like to compartmentalize and to like, you know, because, you know, Donald had a family before, while he was doing all this. And, you know, Donald had a real job, and you know, Donald was someone in his church's community. You know what I mean? And, you know, that Donald was a respected member of society. But yet, you know, the horrible things that Donald did mm. and he hid from everyone. And you know that Donald was the type of person who would plan his murders. He would stalk them. He would sit there and make sure that everything was perfect before he would do them. He would spend like months just like sitting there and watching how these families would leave their homes or how, you know, where their telephone wires were ran to. And, you know, when he would do these murders, he left no trace and he was absolutely analytical about it. So in a way, Donald is almost like the personal, the perfect personal assistant to you, Valentine. Donald knows how the world works as an adult. Donald knows how to hide how to be a monster, and Donald knows how to cover his tracks. He also makes me feel less like a monster. You use him as the, like, I could, I may be bad, but I'm not that bad. Like, you use him to, like, rationalize what you do, you're saying? In a way, yeah, and I guess make me feel better about some of the horrible stuff I do. Like, look at yeah. him, he's a human, and he's doing worse than I am. Yeah, definitely. So you're doing better. That's a good, I like that. That's a good thing. And I feel like almost like, especially with that scene with you two back in the first session of this game that you had, like, he's also like a way for you to show dominance over too. like, you've captured this apex killer, you know what I mean? And you have mm -hmm. broken him to be yours also, you know? So like when you see scenes like that, where he's like, but I'm a God too. And that weird uh, sociopath side of him comes out, you're able to smack that down and be reminded also that you're superior to him too. You know what I mean? It's like this weird, mm -hmm. like, like feed off of each other. But Donald is the perfect example of, of someone who's a personal assistant for uh, kindred. And you know, when you tell Donald coordinate, I want to feed with my herd that he will do it and he'll do it in a discreet way and he'll get all the details and he'll find out everything that's needed so that when it is time for you to feed, you just have to follow his direction. That's what I yeah. want to get cleared out. So in that time that you were talking to Katow and you were talking to Lenny, he was coordinating. So when you get back to the F-250 you know, pickup truck and he opens the door for you, you leave Lenny and Lenny goes about and does his thing and you get inside and he starts the engine, he, he starts driving off. And you don't, you know, not even to like, you don't even have to ask, 
you know that he's simply going to give you the details when it gets there and i don't mean to make it sound like a military like sir this is the thing sir but you just feel like like you're in in, in a fucked up way you're in good hands with him but he won't lead you astray so he, he needs me he needs you too and that's the thing that we're going to explore too because in a way you get this sense of like donald knows that he is above your herd that's why it's like you know like i don't know if you remember but when you told him you want to feed off the herd you kind of saw like contempt in the way he talked about them because he <laughs> knows he's not he's not cattle dude he knows that he's above that but he wants to get to your level you know what i mean but he doesn't want to do it in a way that's like he's not saying he's trying to deceive you or anything like that you know what i mean or fuck you over to get there but he's like he feels like he's on the the brink like he may be able to take that evolutionary step that you took you know and that so that's why he had such contempt for your herd because he thinks that's ultimate weakness you know what i mean that's just like you're just willing to be someone's victim i'm not i'm I'm a god you know kind of thing and so while you're dri- you're driving he's driving the truck you know and you gotta think about the cab of this truck is very large for someone 11 year old you know someone in 11 year old's body you know what i mean like this these mm. f-250 pickup trucks are pretty big and you see him driving through the streets and eventually you start coming to like this three-story building that's kind of like in a business district but it's kind of a business district that is being hit by like the recession that's kind of going on at this time you know like during this time in the united states 2008 9 10 the 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 economy was starting to starting to come out of a recession a little bit but there was still like a ton of these like leased out office buildings that shut down you know like some company would Mm -hmm. lease this office building that had cubicles and all that shit but then the recession happened they went bankrupt went out of business so now there's a lot of these like for lease buildings and he starts driving in an area where there's like a lot of these, you know, and he comes and he drives in this parking lot and he like, that's in the back of one of these buildings. And you see that there's like about 10 cars there, you know, just array of cars. And he stops and he turns off the truck and he looks over at you and he's like, they are in the back there. And he kind of points ahead through the window and you see like there's like a back door that maybe like the janitorial staff used when this was like a you know when this was actually leased out and you see that there's a guy who's sitting like on like a, a plastic chair and he, and you look at the guy and you can kind of tell this guy isn't the type of crowd that your herd hangs out with you know like he's yeah. got that and i don't want i hate saying this because i feel like i'm being cheap as a storyteller but he kind of has that goon vibe you know what i mean and i don't mean that like he looks like oh boss like he's a bad guy but he kind of you've seen him people like him around the scene that your herd is around they're the ones who like pay me if you want privacy you know he pay me for this he's like that figure who kind of like seems to make a profit off of the, the 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 fetish scene that your your herd is part of and so donald points at him and you see Donald look at you, and again, you see his glasses. Like, you can't really quite see his eyes because, like, how dark it is in the cab. And he looks at you, and he's like, you're going to pay that guy $20. And he kind of, like, hands you a $20 bill that's folded. And, like, he knows to give it to you. You know, he's waiting for you to take it. Mm. And, I'll and take, take the 20 and, in, and And he's like, and in there, your herd is waiting for you. They're doing this shit that they do along with other people. But you'll have privacy in there. I say to him, "Have you got another twenty on you?" And he kind of looks at you. And he like takes his wallet out, and you see him take it. And he hands you another twenty. I say, "I won't take it." I'll say, "Yeah, you're coming with me. Come on." And I'll get out of the cab and start walking towards the door. And you see, like when you say that, you can just see like he closes his eyes. You see his jaw clench because you know, like he has total disdain for these people. But he gets out, you know, and he opens the door and he walks, and he's like looking around the parking lot, and you get you. When you're walking next to him and you look up at him you can see like him scanning like around you know what i mean and he like walks up to the door and you see you see that the store is closed and you see this guy sitting in the chair and he stands up and this guy has like a he has like a black polo shirt on and he has like a pair of like khaki shorts and he has these white tennis shoes he looks and he's a caucasian guy and he kind of has like a buzz cut and he looks up at you and he's like and he looks down and are you uh using obfuscate right now to, to, to yeah that drawer? yeah yeah i was gonna mention that that i've Used all okay. the so. It is manipulation performance difficulty seven. Got four successes there. So that's like total transformation, including mannerisms, voice, gestures, and appearance. Describe what what you're having him look like right now. Uh, Danny DeVito with all his body hair shaved off, short and ugly, and just like kind of like like 
eyebrows you... and everything all shaved, so I kind of look like a bit of a freak. You know what I mean? And you're probably in the way that you the way that you feed off your herd. You said you have like this thing where they think you're kind of like someone who's like in the fetish industry who like specializes in kind of like you know meeting certain fetish desires right like not to yeah. get too in the weeds but that's why his thing like he has services and that like he'll meet people okay got you and like you my see eyes that... might be slightly too far apart my lips might be a little too thin you know and pale just kind of a weird looking dude but there's the kind that, yeah yeah there's a he does there's a certain crowd that may enjoy his services so yeah he you see this figure looks at you and then he looks up at donald and you, when you look at Donald, you see the disdain gone because you know Donald is very good at hiding his emotions around strangers. Mm -hmm. And he's like, "I'll be twenty dollars each." I'll hand him my twenty and walk in. Yeah, and he takes both the twenties and he opens the door. As you open the door, you kind of walk in, and there's like a little hallway that you go down that's like twenty feet, and then you see like another door, you know. And there's like steps to the right, like like steps to the right, like to go up. But he's like, "You'll go through there," and he like points to the door in front of you. I'm like, okay, open the door for me. You see Donald's like, I got this. And you see Donald walk forward and he opens the door. And Donald opens the door and you look, you're like kind of standing next to Donald and you look through and you see like, this is like a cubicle farm, you know, like, 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 mm -hmm. like if this place was full, there'd be like 20 desks and people would be on calls right now and they would just be talking. But you notice that like these cubicle farms are different. And the fact that you can't quite see what's going on in these cubicles, but there's like a red curtain that's in the open way that where people normally would walk through. And you're just like, when you walk through there, you just are overcome with the sound of like whips and groaning and we're going to fade to black for this. Cause I'm not going to get into the detail here, but mm -hmm. like pretty much just imagine if like all 20 of these cubicles had people that were doing the taboo in there, not anything illegal, but we're doing taboo. And, and you know that within here are men who are of all walks of life. You know what I mean? And people like mm -hmm. that. And as you slowly walk down one of the cubicle hallways, you see one of your herd and it's an eerie feeling because this guy's, appearance he has like a mustache and he has a like clean cut hair but he's wearing like this weird japanese akono like robes like those thin silk robes and he walks out one of the cubicles and will fade to black we'll say uh how much blood pool points are you taking from the two you can take three from each if you want to it's your call uh, let's make it two from each two from each all right so you have four blood pool point cool four blood pool points now donald will say that during all this donald stands out that he refused you know what i mean he's like Unless you're going to make him watch or whatever, but he, uh, I, I wanted to have him tied up and flogged, but yeah, you know, okay. It's... We'll say we'll fade to black and we'll say that you <laughs> do that, you know what I mean? And definitely, once you guys are driving out afterwards, after all this happens, and you guys are driving, you can tell that like Donald is not he's 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 introverted right now at the moment because you like pretty much went against Donald's and you forced him against his nature, you know what I mean? And right now, but he yeah. he's an addict. And addicts do things, man, that are against their nature at times so they can get that next hit. And he's probably in this fucked up monster head of his trying to rationalize what all just happened. So we'll say that the night goes by a uh, mm -hmm. blow, blow pool point and we will catch you up to like the next night where everyone's here. What it, what it, when you wake up, what are you going to do when you wake up in the cellar of your haven? All right. So I wake up. First thing I do usually when I wake up is check check my emails, check my contacts, check what's going on around the place. And then I'll head up to the house, um, try and find the room where Donald is, if he's awake or if he's home. You get nothing from your contacts or anything like that. But when you come upstairs in the living room, you see Donald's actually sitting in this chair, like a, a love seat kind of chair, watching the news. And as you come walking in, he looks at you and he right away turns off the TV and he just looks at you like he's waiting for you, what you have to say. Did you have fun last night, Donald? For a second, he looks out the window. Like, he looks away from you, looks out the window. And then he looks back at you, and he's like, no. And why <laughs> do you... I don't understand you at times, Valentine. You should be open to new experiences, Donald. I could be used for much more, Valentine. You know this. I know this. Baby steps, Donald. I, I want don't... you to see how I live. I have seen you for 20 years, Valentine. <laughs> And yet you still make me go through stuff like that. Your whining's becoming boring, Donald. What happened while I was asleep? 
well, nothing that's really stuck out. If you utilize me, Valentine, I could get you answers. Mm-hmm. What's, our, what's our point of being here anyways? Uh, I don't know how much I've told Donald. Actually, I hadn't really thought about this. I don't know if he's aware about the whole revenge thing. But, um, do, yeah, I, I suppose he, he has a vague idea of why we're there. Yeah, he has so, a vague idea. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Fill him in and I'll be like, those guys we met last night, uh, I think they can help us find what we're after, but I'm going to have to help them out too. But what, what, what are they able to help out with, and what do you think they're going to require you to help out with? How can I help, Valentine? I don't know yet. Maybe you could uh, see what you can find out about Roman Dunstan. Uh, they haven't asked me. They haven't told me what they want me to do yet, but as soon as I know, I'll, I'll let you know. And I'll put you to work, Donald. I know you're getting antsy. I've been antsy for the last 20 years, Valentine. What did I say about whining, Donald? You see, like, he can tell when your voice changes. You know what I mean? Like, like when you say that, like, he, he's always wanted to push up to the line with you. And, like, yeah. like how you just spoke to him right there, he flinches away and he, like, looks out the window. But what were you going to say? Go ahead. Yeah, but come over here and fade. You see for a second, like, you see, like, his shoulders, like, tense up, but then relax. And he turns around and he walks towards you. And he, like, looks down at you. I'll nick the palm of my hand so that it starts bleeding and I'll just hold it out to him, but I'll look in the opposite direction. Like this is a chore for me. And you could tell like, there's this weird like game Donald does with you sometimes. Like when you nick your hand like that and you leave it out or you nick some, there's times where he'll like jump onto it, but you'll see there's times where like, he's trying to prove a point, like he can go without it, you know? And like, Mm -hmm. like, especially now when you nick your palm of your hand and like you look away and you hold your palm out, like there's an odd like 60 seconds that goes by and it's quiet because like the TV's off. And there's like no sounds, no cars driving by. There's just like the silence and you feel the sense of joy because you know right now like he's in turmoil. Like you made him do horrible shit the night before that is not in his nature, that he does not enjoy. And you made the people who he looks down upon do it to him. Mm-hmm. And then right now he knows that you did that to hurt him. And right now he knows that in the palm of your hand, literally, you have the one thing that has given him the strength and the life that he has now, and he's trying to fight against it. And just like every addict who has gone about trying to go cold turkey without going through the proper ways of kicking something, he falls upon your hand. And there's a moment where you feel this little sense of victory because you know that, like I said, this person who literally looks down on you, who literally was did all these horrible things is now like a melted butter for lack of better term in your hands you know like like he literally is sitting there and dentured to you how many how many blood pool points are you giving him give him two. Oh wow you're letting him gorge huh and yeah. there's a moment where there's a moment where like this is going on and you can tell at first like he's like he's enjoying it but then there's a there's a moment where like you realize he's really realize you're being you're giving him a gift more of a gift what I want to do as well is while he's feeding and not looking at me, I'm going to use um, Blizzard Mask of a Thousand Faces. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to make myself look like his face right in his moment of, you know, his moment of ecstasy while he's drinking the blood. Just his kind of leading his guard down his face, looking really desperate. And holy shit, I need this blood. I want to kind of mock him with his own face. Okay, go ahead and go ahead and roll it. <laughs> Uh, zero successes. <laughs> okay, so you try it, but you know he doesn't notice, and he's so like lost in it. And there's a moment where you feel like <sighs> you feel let down a little bit, but then he like like that's when you will say you pull your hand away when you realize that the the moment's gone. You know that moment where you really feel you could have <laughs> sunk in. Now, one question before we continue on the next scene: mm. Would you ever give Donald at this moment the gift? I like to let him think that I would, but it's oh, not so my intention it- at the moment. So you are always like dangling that carrot in front of him. Like, oh, yeah. you might get this. You might get this. You might get this. And he's, okay, I got it. Definitely. Yeah. I'll also wipe his mouth for him when he's done with my sleeve. Like a little baby and clip his lip with my index finger. And you see a moment where, wow. Because I would say like in a man like this, who's a sociopath, who doesn't have empathy, you see like this moment of like where you think you probably see a version of Donald before whatever fucked him up, fucked him up. Maybe Donald's born this way. 
you don't know. Maybe it was Donald's a product of his environment. You, you don't know. But you looked out this moment, you see a moment where like almost like he's untainted. But then as the moment that your finger like leaves his lips after you like kind of like just touch it, you see that mask come on and he stands up. And then you see him just like kind of like instinctually goes like this. And he looks down at you for a second. And he's like, so what are we going to do tonight? We'll wait for a phone call. Uh, why don't we check on all our gear, make sure everything's up to scratch. I want you to move some furniture around a little bit. You notice while he goes about and he does that, that he's just like moving stuff, you know what I mean? And he's just like, mm. he has this newfound like energy that's within him and he's just picking stuff up and he's, and he's like, um, you're kind of watching. Cause like in a way it's like, I don't know, man. I can only imagine like, you know, that part of you is in him, like running through him right now. That's giving him that, mm. that like you have extended him a gift. I would almost say that it's like an ego builder in a way, you know? Hello folks. Have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts or just media in general that deals with your favorite white wolf role-playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded, one which wouldn't be drowned out by random posts and discussion so that your media could get the attention you want? Well, we have the answer for you in a Facebook group we run called Weight Wolf RPGs Gameplay and Media. The group is specifically ran with the sole intent of it being a one-stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. We are currently over 1,000 members strong and we are continuing to rapidly grow with new media being shared every day. Stop on by. We hope to see you there. High Level Games, the industry's first choice in taking your games to the next level. We are a podcast blog and new media network at highlevelgames.ca. We have blog posts about all of your favorite games going up five days a week and a podcasting network with actual plays and shows that discuss role-playing games with more rolling out all the time. We are on iTunes, Twitch, and YouTube. Find out more information at highlevelgames.ca, a site that certainly isn't controlled by a shadowy board of directors of otherworldly origin. That's highlevelgames.ca. Please, help. They're coming. <laughs> The Los Angeles metropolitan area is constantly growing and changing. The central district is full of new buildings. The Hollywood and Wilshire districts, once far from downtown, now are part of a which spreads past Beverly Hills and out to the ocean. But why is all this going on in Los Angeles? Why is Los Angeles an exploding city? Neon Masquerade The Demon's Mirror Thirteen Candles Three chronicles running through the undead veins of the City of Angels. The Esoteric Order of Role Players Actual Play Podcast invites you to drink deeply. Go to eorpodcast.com and search the Duets tag to find out more. <laughs>